Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first. My name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Projection Screen Paint or Supreme Ambient Light Technology Screens, which I'm going to be changing that soon because uh, we're in the process of signing a contract with somebody who's going to be designing screens, projection screens. Um, so uh, that's something I'm working on right now, including with orders that are going out today. All right, so first things first, I want to shut my PS4 off because this has been running all day. Where's my, uh, can never find my uh, stand for my camera. So I want to get in there and shut that off because that's been running all day and I don't want to burn up my system. Bad enough, I don't know when to turn it off. All right, so we're going to put you right there for right now. I did a demonstration on the fabric screen outside. Um, got a lot of good reactions from people outside and got some nosy people who wanted to walk into my driveway and have a look at the screen. Now they didn't walk in front of the camera because they saw the camera's recording, but they're right up on top of my projector, which I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that they had stepped over sour into the driveway. Um, I got a chance, that person actually was walking back and I had a, got a chance to have a conversation with explain to him, like, don't do that, don't walk, you know, on someone's driveway. And, uh, you know, once you walk on the driveway, the cameras will pick you up. So, uh, he was a real nice person and all. He was just curious because he seen me set the screen up when he was driving past. And the screen was jet black and he was not, he never saw a jet black screen before uh, used. So usually, you know, he has a screen in his backyard and he said the screen was all white and so forth. So. You know, usually all whites, all projection screens outside are white. All right, so uh, first things first, I'm going to come over here and show you the screen itself right there. So there's the screen already done and painted. And like I said, you know, I prime the surface first so that way there's no paint that's going to seep through and cause blots on the screen because, like I said, some of the surface is going to uh, absorb some of the paint. And some of it's not, so that's why you want to prime the surface first before doing so. All right, so I'm going to pull the screen back so you can see the back side of it. Put this over here. Now, this is just dirt on my screen right here. See how white that looks? See how there's no blots from the paint pushing through? That's because all that paint just stayed on the layer on which I painted. That's why I always put that prime on it first. Or any kind of household paint to leave a, um, a kind of a, a, a foundation there so the paint doesn't become um, the screen has become blotty all right so I'm going to take my screen and drape it over these chairs over here I'm going to do a demonstration here I'm also going to be doing a demonstration more on that thousand lumen projector because I got to paint a screen for that one too Somebody asking me a question about wrinkles in the screen. This is an outdoor screen. You cannot design for indoor. So, you know, if you're thinking about painting one of these and using it for indoor use, I would suggest don't do it. It's, it's pretty much an outdoor screen. You're not going to get every last wrinkle out. You know what I mean? Besides, some majority of some outdoor screens have wrinkles in them. But it's not something that's going to disrupt the picture quality because I've done outdoor screens before using the same kind of material. So it's easy to remove the wrinkles out. All you have to do is go to the back of the uh, back of the projector where I showed you the white side, and that's the side that you want to uh, you want to paint. Let me turn my projector on. No, sorry, not paint. Sorry, that's the side you want to iron. You want to iron the opposite side of the screen. 
You don't want to iron the black part because you'll damage the screen. But these are designed for outdoors. Uh, if you want a screen that's going to be perfectly flat and no wrinkles outside, I would suggest you do, uh, reflatables have, still have wrinkles and little wrinkles from side to side of the corners and stuff, but I would suggest you just go out and get um, some paneling or maybe uh, um, just, uh, I don't know, some wood to do it. But other than that, you're gonna have uh, some wrinkles in the screen. It's just nothing's gonna disrupt the picture quality but too much. And if you have it outside where it's just sitting outside, um, you're going to be able to, uh, all that's going to basically come out in time. Get my image up real quick. There we go. That's why I like the lens shift. I love lens shift for the fact that you can do that. It doesn't make a difference where I set my projector. That lens shift is going to allow me to be positioned anywhere I need to go. Now this demonstration, one of these are ViewSonic uh, FH4300 uh, them projector. Wait, wait, if I said it right, FH30. Put that the 30 in there. But you gotta have those numbers in there. I think I have my soundbar for this too. The soundbar is different. Okay. And this is gonna look nice. So since we have because the day when it started up, it was a bit cloudy outside, so I was thinking that maybe um, we we're going to get some rain and I might not be able to come in and uh, do the demonstration uh, outside. I want to do a demonstration outside on the screen again. I think we're going to use a thousand lumens in this time. So we'll wait till it gets dark and we we'll use a thousand lumens. I would not suggest even a thousand lumens between six and seven. All right. my phone to power up so I can do the demonstrations off my phone. I'm sick of that. My lights out here too. My lights are still on. Uh, good thing that all orders, all my orders are done. So that's a good thing right there. Which means we had, I had three orders come in just a few minutes ago. I was able to knock them out and get them out of the way. That feels good to get my orders done quickly and as fast as possible. Really happy screen came out fantastic as you can see fabric projection screen look at that when I had this set out out front I've got actually when I got done taking down the screen I got about four or five people that came over hey how you doing I got four or five people that came over they didn't get too close because like I said I can't get close to anybody and they actually wanted to know if they could basically get a screen put in their backyard. So I may be doing a few screens in the neighborhood, but it's something they're just gonna have to pick up right at the, uh, I'm not gonna meet them with it. I'm just gonna basically, they can buy on the website and they can just do a pickup. But I don't, I don't think I wanna do that too much because then again, I'll have people coming to the house all the time. So I don't know about that yet. Now, as you look at the screen, let me come up here for a minute. 
back and it's hit something else. Play also. Now somebody was asking me about. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, uh, PS5. It's gonna look fantastic. You ever seen my screen on the PS4? I've run. I've done this screen on a thousand lumen projectors. This screen will look. It looks fantastic on a thousand lumens. So. Keep in mind, a PS4 gaming system like that, it's a cakewalk for this technology. And it doesn't, it mostly, if you're talking about that, and you want to get the best out of your PS, PS5, because I'm planning to buy one. I'm already set up. I got money in my account already waiting for the PS5 just to give me a pre-order date so I can go pick it up. So you will see it on my screen. I'm a big time gamer. You will see it on my screen. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a custom screen for it, like I, with the 12, but apparently I can't get my hands on plexiglass now. So I might have to figure another way around that. Now if I'm using projectors, I have a projector here that was manufactured in 2001. It's an old projector and that thing looks amazing on this screen. So PS5, that kind of technology, that's a cakewalk. I'm streaming this right now through a Chromecast 720p. But yeah, I can't wait. I do a lot, like I said, if you watch any of my demonstrations, I do a lot of outdoor demonstrations outside on the deck and usually out there I have my PS4 hooked up and do a lot of gaming out there. Sorry about that. They're going to pop up. Do I, anytime I load a YouTube video, it's going to pop up. I try not to get political when it comes to my business, but it's going to pop up. Now, something I want to add to also, too. Now, for the person who's asking about wrinkles in the screen, um, this is an outdoor screen. So these screens are designed to be uh, strung up, folded, rolled up and store that's what they're designed to be people are going to have these screens you're going to either if you get something big enough like if you get a screen size and probably about 150 and up then that's the screen pretty much most people are going to keep stationary but usually screens of these sizes of a 50 inch uh 100 inch 120 usually they're portable so someone's going to get this they're going to string it up to somebody's backyard or whatever at a friend's house or whatever and they're going to take it with them so these are designed to be portable so it's going to be folded over and over again and again and again so the technology is designed not to crack or peel, because it's designed to bleed into the surface. Let's see what else we can pull up. These videos are kind of short, man. These demos, man. Let's go with this one right here. But anyway, so it's designed to bleed into the surface. That's why you can paint motorized projection screens with this technology, because it's designed to bleed into the surface. You're not going to have an extra layer of paint sticking up off your screen. It's going to jam your motor up. But um, so one of the things to, to cut down on any heavy wrinkles is you're gonna you don't want massive lines running across your screen because that's going to distort it. Anything small, like any small wrinkles in the screen, you're really not going to notice when it's outside when you're watching movies and stuff like that. If you're planning to use this indoors, don't bother. It's not these screens are not designed for that. Um, these are basically that's why they have built-in grommets. They're designed to be used for outside. But. Um, if you have any major wrinkles, like major huge lines across the screen, all you got to do is just get an iron, put it on warm cycle, go to the back of the screen, and just and just work the screen over, and that's it. You don't want to iron the front of the screen because you will damage the screen. And I'll show you, like, and I told you when I, when I do, when anytime you do a fabric, you want to prime the fabric always, because what you want to do is you want to add one or two coats it's up to you always put two coats on mine any kind of paint it doesn't have to be a special kind of uh primer it can be any kind of paint and make a difference and what that does is that keeps the screen from basically having blocks all over the screen because when you're dealing with fabrics you want to soak in more some may soak in less and then you'll have uneven spots on your screen so how you cut down on that 
or completely kill that all together. All you have to do is just basically just paint the back of the screen or paint the whole entire screen from the front with two coats of white. And what that's going to happen, white, green, doesn't make a difference. As long as you get something that's going to, exor the screen's going to be absorbed to its maximum capacity where it can't absorb anymore. And then once that's done and it dries, just coat over top of it and you're done. That's it. Pretty easy. Now, if you don't want to roll it, you can spray it. I've rolled a 180 inch screen. Applications are fast. As a matter of fact, it doesn't take long. Um, less than an hour. Less than an hour and probably somewhere between, um, i say uh, 30 minutes for the fan. Um, I'll post a link on here. And that link, you'll see me, uh, I sh actually I don't show me priming the screen, but it does show me painting the screen. So in the demonstration, it shows me painting the screen and it shows the demonstration outside. Now today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a demonstration outside at night with the thousand lumen projector because a few people have used our screens with projectors under a thousand. Um, I'll post those links in there too. We got some customers uh, who posted on our Facebook fan page and one fellow was using a Philip projector at 700 lumens, ultra short though, which that was impressive. And the other person was a uh, family out in New York City uh, they used an 800 lumen projector outside, at dark, of course, 800 lumens outside, and he's on a 120 inch screen. So I was quite impressed by that right there, because our specifications for using them outside is about, uh, it's around um, uh, 3,000 lumens. Uh, 3,000 lumens outside and 25 inside, but you can go much lower than that, because I've used my Sony VPL uh, CS4, and that is a 1,000 lumen projector. So yesterday was pretty interesting because I had the screen outside and I had people out there watching the screen, of course, from a distance, of course. Um, and uh, one fellow did come into the driveway. Actually, when I was actually in my doorway uh, switching over the video, somebody did walk in and they were behind the projector. And I had explained to them they needed to um, move away from the driveway and, um, uh, you know, on the sidewalk. Um, but, uh, you know, he went about his way, which I thought was kind of weird, you know what I mean? He's walking on somebody's driveway. I wonder if I had a dog back there, but, you know, whatever. So anyway, um, he came back again. He's a real nice fellow. He came back again, and he said he had drove by when I was setting up the screen, and he couldn't figure out why the screen was black. You know, he has a white screen in his backyard, and that's what baffles people when they see the screen out there. Usually, screens, when you see them outside, are black, I mean, are white. So that's when he started asking all these questions and stuff. Like I said, real nice fellow, you know, kept his distance and all. And uh, he talked about, he wanted to know exactly how he could get, convert his uh, projection screen in his yard to that black technology. So um, he'll be giving me a call later on today and um, I'll be selling him some paint so he can go set up, set up his, uh, his setup, his projection screen out back. So a lot of, a lot of questions most people ask is, you know, if I do an inflatable screen, you know, you got to inflate this screen, you got to roll it up. I mean, the inflatable screens take a lot of abuse. I had a few of them. And you got to blow the screen up and you got to fold it up and stuff it in a bag and then re-inflate it again over and over again. So he was quite curious whether or not if the product would crack under that kind of stress. But you don't have to worry about that. All right. Now, in this demonstration, we are using my Sony, uh, this is my big boy. So this is my Sony, these are the ones we use outside, 3400 lumen projector. Uh, this is the VPO FH30. That's an FH36 right there. And on the floor, that's an Optima GT56. So we, I test my technology on just about everything. That's my 135 inch black screen. It's a fun screen to play with. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go in here. Let me pause it for a minute because we're going to do this on two different scales because you know some people will say well ken guess what you're using a 4300 lumen projector that's yeah, a lot of power on a projector even though it's sitting at a distance in a fully lit environment but let's go in the kitchen real quick so we'll walk through the kitchen and we'll come over to orders that are done for the day 
Uh, two of those are ordered to add on the account, which would have been shipped out a long time ago, but unfortunately my printer decided to run out of ink, so I had to get ink shipped in the next day, which came in yesterday. So those are two orders, and these are the orders that came in today. So because we're caught up on all our orders, the minute an order comes due, we can give you a shipping tracking number right on the spot. So let's come over here and look at the projectors we have. These are some of the toys I have. We're going to use this one. This is my portable projector. This one I got for $75. There's my other Sony. I own two of the Sonys. Actually, I might be getting my hands on a Sony uh, FH31. It's the only one I don't own. Now, there's some higher models than this, but I'll get those later on. Uh, right now, I just want to concentrate on getting um, getting uh, get my cord. So, getting the projectors, a particular projector I want. It's that 31 is another one that I want. All right, so just need the power cord if it will come with me. I know I got to do wire management over here. I got to get my wires together over here. It's insane. The guy who sold me this projector, man, fantastic merchant. Man, that thing came with the case. It came with the remote control. It came with the cables, software. It came with everything, man. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He doesn't have any more, unfortunately. Usually, when I buy projectors, um, sometimes if I get it from a factory or a company, or if I get it from a company who sells them, um, then I can post the link. If it's somebody who's just selling their projector, uh, then I have to basically, that's the last one they have. Now, let me show you something. Now, usually, if you get a projector that doesn't have a, um, uh, um, an HDMI port, this adapter right here is a miracle right here. This will turn any HDMI into, so any VGA into an HDMI, and it has a separate port on there. I don't know if you see it right there, so you can plug up. Um, any form of um, a sound bar or something like that so that comes in handy so that's why I wasn't too worried about check this out I love this projector watch this if I got the right side Woo! I love that I love it I think the only thing about this projector I wish it would have had was a battery pack battery pack would have been nice because I can just throw a flash drive from there and just basically load some movies up and you can kaye all right, so we're just gonna set this one, Sony on Sony. I'm gonna set this on top of my other projector. I'm just gonna plug it in. And then when I'm ready to switch over, I'll just plug the Chromecast in the back of this one. All right, let me see. So this projector right here, the one I showed you. Now the big boy projector is 1920 by 1200. Uh, and it is uh, WXGA, which is widescreen format. Um, so, and the projector I have on top of it, which is the little Sony right here is an SVGA. You can see the model number right there. It's an SVGA. Well, I'm actually kind of telling you right now. Um, this is an SVGA projector, uh, 800 by 600 res. It doesn't have a contrast rating at all, period. It just doesn't. Um, the projector is 720p, of course. You have 600 by 800 res. Um, and for the person, the big boy projector I'm using, it's a Sony VPL FH30. Um, like they said, they make several different models. They make the 30, 30, the 36, the difference between the 36 and the 30, the 36 is 5200 lumens, and that projector has something called edge blending, which means you know how you take two projectors and you put them together and you link it up to make one big giant screen. You usually have to go use some kind of warp software or blending software. Well, those projectors right there, if you link two of them together, they have a one button push, which means all I have to do is go into the menu and it's an option that'll pop up that'll say on or off, edge blending, and I click that and the screens will lock together perfectly. And I gotta get another one of those, but unfortunately I got that one for 350 and everybody else wants 800 for the rest of them. So I gotta wait until somebody can bring their price down. All right, so let's finish off with this one. We'll finish this video here. See those beautiful contrast levels and bright colors. And then we're going to stone eight thousand lumens.
So people realize that the, the basic The lamp model set to on the on the projector set to basically um eco mode. It's a forty three hundred lumen projector. There'd be no point for me to have it now. If you want to get into specifications on how my projectors are set up, when we first test out our products, I use my Casio projector. My Casio projector is a twenty five hundred lumen projector. It sits in eco mode, and the contrast and brightness on that projector. I think the brightness on that projector is at sixteen and the brightness on the contrast is at minus one so we don't typecast on doing the same projector over and over again i have different forms of projectors that i use so let me come over here and let's put on the sony it's not accusing you of anything i've just had people saying oh i want to see the inside of your projector i've done those demonstrations already you go check my youtube count my archives i got enough demonstrations in there to literally choke a racehorse so when i mean i've done demonstrations on every level i do them on every level all right, let me go in here. Let's hook up the, uh, let's take this one out, the big boy. We'll knock that one out right now. And we'll grab our Chromecast and we'll hook up our 720p 1000 lumen projector. Now keep in mind, I haven't changed any of the settings in this projector. As a matter of fact, you should go check out the unboxing on this projector because I unboxed the projector live and didn't change any of the settings. The only settings that were changed on the projector was basically had to switch it over to a computer so I can get the VGA to activate activate them with the adapter so I can run the Chromecast. But it's still in its original factory settings. I did the unboxing right live on YouTube. On a thousand lumens, white wall versus black screen. I don't like I don't back down from challenges. I actually accept them because I mean you can name it, done it already. I froze screens. We had a Somebody was asking us about over in Canada, they were watching um, their hockey games outside. I mean, that's got to be freaking cool. They're barbecuing in the snow and watching hockey games, and they're wondering if the screen would crack and peel under cold temperatures. So I have a demonstration of me taking a screen, wrapping it in duct tape, soaking it in water, and sticking it in my deep freezer for a day. And then I pulled it out, and I pulled the screen apart on camera. Put the camera right on close so you can see the screen did not crack or peel. One screen actually we did froze. I mean literally it froze into a block of ice and I had to take it outside and beat it with a hammer. I gotta post that one. We had to beat the screen with a hammer to break out the ice and then there were still particles on it that basically just wouldn't release the screen so we could open it up so I had to stick it in the microwave. I had to cook my screen. I think I put it in the conventional oven. Pretty sure it was a conventional oven. So we cooked the screen a little bit so we can pull it apart. So that was an interesting demonstration. All right, so let's go hook up. We got already, we're gonna hook up the um, Sony. Power on for that one, my little projector. A little tiny projector. It's definitely gonna overlap the screen because um, I think these projectors do up to, pretty good for the projectors, 150 inch. And where are we at on this? Let me see. Let me bring this down a little bit. There we are. We're warming up. It's an old projector. You got to give it some time. It isn't like the um the big boys I had. The mini turner suckers on a newer projector. Bam! They just come on. This is an older projector. This projector was made, I think, back. Um, they stopped manufacturing this projector in like 2001. I got a projector downstairs that was manufactured and they, they stopped manufacturing in 1999. I had one already. I already had 4K. Been there, done it already. As a matter of fact, in one of my demonstrations, the first projector I bought was 4K. Was a um, I bought the uh, the Dusonic PX747. I bought it when it first came out. Used it on our black technology. And not only that, in one of my demonstrations, we started working with this. Uh, it was a crystal that we were working with. We got over from Japan. I'm not going to explain the whole thing about it, but you can check out the demonstration. We did a 720p versus a 4k side by side with that technology you couldn't tell one from the other and i said right there on camera there is no point for me to go out and buy a um a uh, 4k projector ah uh, yes that projector was i'm sorry my friend i can see this has got to be a debater look man i'm trying to show a video and you want to debate me about my technology i've been in business for 10 years and you're trying to tell me about what? 
I don't got time for that. Goodbye. You come on here and ask questions, I have no problem with that. And if you want to come in here and try to ridicule my work, especially when I've been doing this for years and you've seen all the demonstrations that I do on boxings and everything on my product, I don't have time for that nonsense. All right, let's move on. All right, so we're going to fire up. Now, we just had the, th we had the uh, 4300 lumen projector on right now. Now we're using the 720p Sony projector right now at 1,000 lumens. All right. Because, you know, like I said, when you have some people doing demonstrations on a high power projector, you know, people start thinking, well, maybe the projector is doing all the work. Because, you know, it is a 4300 lumen projector, you know what I mean? All right, so let's go in here and let's grab um, something we can watch. Um, let's see if I can switch it over. What we got going on here? to bring up something for you guys. We'll do the lizards and then we'll go from there. I lost my signal, so it'll bounce back on. Also, too, I want you to check out that white wall next to the screen. It's not even there anymore, is it? Look at that. Okay, hold on for a minute. It's going here. All right, I don't know what's going on with that. All right, let's go play this through. And there you go. It's a thousand lumen projector right there, my people. My people! <laughs> it's a thousand lumen projector I'm running right now. So we just did the 4300 lumen projector. Now we're doing the thousand lumen projector. Now, see, it's the part that kills me. When people come in and say, oh, have you done it on 4K? So let me get this straight. Let me understand this. So I'm doing this on a projector that's 720p and it's 600 by 800 res. It probably was. Guarantee it was. Uh, because we get them from time to time. They'll pop in our channel and they'll start ridiculing me, asking all these questions. And the thing about it is they won't do any of the, he won't do any of the demonstrations that I do. I mean, come on now. Can't ridicule. Uh, there's technology out there that my screen can't match. I'm not going to ridicule it. I mean, I mean, I'm going to try to see if I can, if I can basically match the technology, but I'm not going to ridicule it, you know. But like I said, they want to ask me a ton of questions about this, that, and the other, because these are questions that are not answered when you watch those videos. Now I can come on here and show you a 4300 lumen powerhouse projector. That's around, if you were to buy brand new, they cost about four grand. And then I can show you a projector that is around a thousand lumens. And as you can see, look at the picture quality. But most people don't do that. They're going to show you, uh, the, they're going to use the most powerful projector they can get their hands on to show you the best picture po possible so they can say, look, look at the image that the picture is pulling off. Yeah, you, know, you got to start thinking, man. At certain points, man, you got to start thinking that maybe that, that's just all the projector right there. And I'll tell you why. Look, all right. Um, when Black Diamond was displayed over in Best Buy, they used to have a, um, a show booth over there. You can go and you can check out the screen. So I just popped over there because I'm always into the electronic section anyway. So as I get over there, I'm sitting down and I'm looking at the whole setup, man. It's a whole movie theater setup. They got the chairs, the lights, the whole nine yards, the whole wow factor is right there in that one little room. But as you're looking at this screen, you start thinking, I mean, most people don't think about this, but I do because I do this for a living. I think like, what kind of projector are they using in the background? And I'm pretty sure it's a 4K high power projector. It's probably a monster of a projector behind me. So then you got to start thinking like at one point, which one's doing all the work? Is it the projector or the screen? Now, if they did that demonstration on a 720p projector, like something really old, and they got an excellent picture, that would make you buy the screen. Because then that will make you think that, hey, look, if we need to get that out of that projector, I'm pretty sure the projector I got at my home, my house, or what I could buy, you know what I mean? It's not going to cost me an arm and leg. But how can you relate to a screen that's using a 50,000 ultra short throw projector at 10,000 lumens and it's a 4K laser projector? And a lot of people can't relate to that. So that's why I do these demonstrations. We used to get ridiculed for doing demonstrations on crappy 720p projectors because if I can make a 720p projector look good, then that means the projector you got at house is going to look fantastic, as long as it's name brand. I keep saying it over and over again. 
So that's what they don't understand, you know. NX7, who makes the NX7? Who makes the who makes the NX7? Because I don't I, I've never heard of that projector. It's made by NEC, uh, Sony, um, ViewSonic, any one any of those companies. Optima. Oh, JVC. Woo! Yeah, I will bow to you, my friend. I will bow to you. JVC is a freaking monster of a projector. I will bow to you, my friend. Yes, that's a monster of a projector. Woo! Lucky you. Lucky, lucky you. I'll get a JVC one day. Not now, but I'll get a JVC one day. Actually, I was kind of thinking about that 8K JVC, but I'm not going to run off of it. I mean, I've talked about it a few times because I've never had anything that powerful. The most powerful projector I have in here is 50 to 52, but 8K, I'm like, there's nothing really I'm going to run off that. It's not like I'm going to be to go out and just basically buy something that's going to be 8K. I mean, I don't like to think about that one for a minute. All right, let's get some sound in here. I keep forgetting the sound of this one. Woo! All right, that's a little loud. Sorry about that. Oh, remember I was telling you about that adapter? All right, so the adapter right here, if you want to run your sound bar, so I have my sound bar running through here, you just plug it right at the bottom right there, and you can run your sound right through there. That's what I like about this. Some of the adapters that I saw that they had, um, that they were selling, didn't have any way of connecting any kind of audio, so you just didn't have audio. All right, let's see if we can find something else besides this. Yeah, but we get them in here every once in a while. We get, we call them um, crowaholics. We get them in here every once in a while. And I think what it is, they want to kind of trip me up on some of the things I talk about. That's what they try to do. But man, I know technology, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm 52, man. When I was going to school, we didn't have any VCR or DVD or none of that stuff, man. We had real to real, man. You grew up in that freaking era, man. You get to see stuff. I mean, I remember my brother getting an 8-track installed in his car. Paper comb speakers, all that other good stuff. Yep. And like I said, the nightmare of a slideshow. If you have never been through a slideshow in your entire life, thank God you haven't really seriously. Oh my goodness, man. You've never been to a slideshow. <laughs> I should put y'all through a slideshow. <laughs> Thinking about that. I should just buy a slideshow on eBay with somebody else's freaking vacation trips and just randomly navigate, uh, um, um, narrate the whole entire thing. Yeah, that, that's, whew, man, you just don't know. I'm trying to get something else here. You. Sorry about this, people. Yeah, if you ever watch like a TV shows and stuff, and um, somebody comes in and that TV show and says, "Hey, look, we went on vacation, and we got like 500 uh, um, slide shots of our vacation, and we want to come over and." You will watch it together and you see the other person's face like, oh, no, the heck, this is not going to happen. Yeah, if you ever had a chance to bend through a slideshow before, you could feel their pain. It is something else. Well, not all of it's bad, but I mean, I'm just, if you saw my facial expression right now, it's like, it's not something you want to go through. All right, so here we are on a thousand lumens, watching some Tron. I'm going to take this projector out tonight. And I'm going to do the same this demonstration outside. We're going to play around with it out, not outside because, like I said, I had a customer who used an 800 lumen projector outside and about 120 inch screen. This is how big this screen is, about 120 inch. Now, um, Keep in mind before I, I'm just going to explain this really quick. Those of you who know this already, you know, hats off to you. But 
if you get a thousand lumen projector, depending on how far the projector sits back to call the distant throw, um, you don't start off with a thousand lumens with a projector. You actually, your projector will start to drop as it starts to travel and make contact with the screen. So depending on how much ambient light you have in the environment and how far your projector sits back, um, that depends on how strong, actually it depends on how much lumens you're going to drop before it makes it to the screen. That's why if you look at venue projectors, they're like 5,000, 6,000 lumen projectors. The projectors are usually sitting back somewhere between 13, 14, 15, maybe 20 feet back. So consider the fact they have to deal with a lot of commercial lighting, maybe they have windows in the environment, they're going to lose a couple of uh, a thousand lumens here and there. So they might lose 4,000 4, 4, lumens or somewhere maybe between 5,000 lumens. You know I mean, they might only have a thousand lumens by the time that projector reaches destination because the, the light in the environment is going to rip it up. So that screen is going to have to be able to generate a high enough gain, contrast, color, the whole nine yards, to produce an image from what little lumens that make it to the screen, it's going to have to generate enough gain for you to see the image coming back at you. So we are, and keep in mind, when we started off, my projector started here, now it's starting back here. I'll show you how far we're sitting back from the screen. We're probably about, i say a good maybe nine feet back from the screen. So nine feet at a thousand lumens traveling through an ambient light environment and making contact to a jet black screen. So that screen has to have enough gain so you can see the image right now. That's why we call them 12s. Now this projector right here doesn't have contrast at all. None. It is just basically it has no rating on any contrast whatsoever. So the beautiful thing, really quick, and I'm sorry to do this again, I do apologize. I'm just trying to explain something to you. The beautiful thing about having a jet black screen is it doesn't make a difference how high or how low your contrast is. You're still going to achieve a black level. Now that projector sitting on the floor over there is an Optima GT5600 with a 20,000 to 1 contrast. If I hit that on a white or gray screen, you're not going to see that image right there. It's not going to happen. If you turn out the lights, you're still not going to see that image. You're just going to see a shaded gray area, but between shaded gray color, but you're not going to get true blacks. Now, this projector over here, as I said before, doesn't have any contrast at all, but yet it's producing an image as if the projector has a 20,000 or 10,000 to 1 contrast. See the cool thing about that? So keep in mind, if I could buy projectors like this and make them look like this, I can go on eBay and just buy just about any name brand projector I want. I don't care whether or not if the contrast is high or the lumens are high enough. I don't care because it's going to show up on the screen regardless. Pay $75 for this one right here. That's all it cost me. My little portable projector. Take a look at that white wall. It shows you how much your picture quality you're using. I got some people still using white screens. So I don't know why. Now you see the image back there that's coming across my kitchen right there. The image that's coming. How this is how big the screen is. The screen is actually I think I got a should be at 150 inches right now because it's hitting the back of my kitchen. So if I had a screen back there, it would fill out that whole entire area back there. Now you got to consider the fact the pixel count. It's a 600 by 800 uh, res projector SVGA. So the pixel count isn't exactly that high, which means the bigger the screen, the more the pixels are going, are going to suffer, they're going to deteriorate. So you're not losing any picture quality at all. Look at the bright lights flashing off the motorcycles. Another customer.
So if you find one of these projectors, like I said, the most it's going to cost you is $75. That's it. And the reason why it's going to cost you $75 is because they think no one's going to buy a 1,000 lumen projector, 600 by 800 SVGA 720p. Merchants, just to let you know, that if you have projectors like this, I will be coming for them. Because I plan to buy five more of these bad boys. There's no heat that generates off this thing. It's beautiful. Now, we have enough supplies downstairs. We have orders, that, a few orders that came in last night. Some came in today. You will receive tracking numbers. The minute your order pops in, because we can ship it out right away. Um, as long as it's before um, 5 o'clock, because that's when the carrier comes by and picks up the packages. So to get your order in before 5 o'clock, you get a tracking number today. Well, actually right away. Only time we have a pause on the tracking number, unless we got to supply more product, we got to go and buy more supplies, that's the only way. And I have somebody who picks up my most of my stuff for me. So everything else I can have shipped in overnight. When she comes down and picks up whatever I want, it's usually like a day because she works. Just a demonstration because of the, the bright colors. I don't want to do some gaming. Actually, I do gaming a lot. I do gaming. I do demonstrations outside on gaming. I do a lot of demonstrations on gaming. But chances are, not today, because I got a busy schedule today. Uh, usually if you see me out back and I got the projector set up and I got the PS4 and I'm doing some gaming out there That means I got time to relax. Other than that, I'm supposed to be working Actually, I have played Borderlands. Man, you're late, man. You're you're really late. I've done Borderlands already we done that a couple of nights ago. I did Borderlands, I did uh, Call of Duty, did a bunch of them. Now I'm not gonna be doing a demonstration uh, out in the deck tonight because I got some other things I have to do today. I have a contract right now, I'm in the middle of a contract. I'm doing a contract uh, for someone who's going to be uh, designing projection screens for our company. So I got somebody who's going to be actually building uh, some uh, some screens for our company because people want the wallpaper screens to come out, but uh, we're not going to bring them out somebody else. We're going to let somebody else do it. They're going to do it. Only time I do gaming is less. I got some time to chill. Other than that, most of the time it's work, so I don't have time. And usually, if I'm gaming like late at night, I'm just just me gaming late at night. You know, I'm not going to record everything. I just want some me time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing about something else. I had somebody, uh, I had somebody uh, talking about, uh, it, was, it was something else, but it was online, I was gaming online last night. So I was doing some gaming online last, last night, and my favorite game to play online, my all-time favorite game to play online is freaking um, Hellblade. Nah, that's not kind of like kind of things I like to play. 
Um, I kind of play, um, well, mainly the game I've been playing the most is Dungeon Defenders 2. I'm a big fan of Dungeon Defenders 2. I was playing that on PC way before I played it on console. I freaking love that game. I can't stop playing. I love it. So, mainly that's where I'll be at playing Dungeon Defenders 2. I saw the game, it is, it's very, very beautiful, but it's not my cup of tea. I mean, I, I done Shinobi and all that other crazy stuff, man. Uh, Ninja Blade and all that other crazy stuff. I've done all that stuff already, you know. Good God, freaking Ninja, it's a Ninja Blade, no, Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox One was a freaking nightmare, man. And then when they bought it on the 360, it was an even bigger nightmare. Oh, that was the hardest game I've ever played in my entire life. That game drove you to drink. If you weren't an alcoholic, you was by the end of the day if you played that game. And if you was a Christian, you said a lot of curse words. Oh man, that game basically pushed your buttons. Man, the bosses were freaking insanely hard. It was a good game. It was a really good game. It just took you there. Literally, it took you there. You know when a game is so hard that you start questioning the people who designed the game. Like, what the freak were they thinking? Why would you make a boss that freaking hard to beat? Like, the freaking, your 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 health line would be about, you know, if anyone played that game, your health line was like this. But the boss's health line would be halfway across the screen. And you would do some special effects on it. And just a little bit of that bar would just drop off. That's all. And then right when you get down to like the very nitty gritty of it, the nitty gritty of almost killing this thing, it would just take its time dropping off inch after inch after inch. I mean, come on, really seriously? Like in the middle of it, you can hit a special effect and you can wipe the bar down and like down in this. But the minute you get down to that little tiny last bit when your fingers are shaking and they're so sweaty because they're slipping off the controller and at one point you think you're going to go green and snap your controller in half, it just takes little inch after inch after inch after inch after inch and you get to that little bit that looks like there's nothing there and you still have to give it everything you have to take it down. Oh my goodness, especially when you have that that life bar where you have nothing left and if you get hit one time you're gone. Oh yeah. After that you have to turn the system off and just go down to your local bar and just drink until you pass out. Yeah, that was Ninja Gate, man. That was whew. I gave him something else, man. It was fun. I give him that. It was fun. It was just really hard. Final Fantasy. Ah, uh, I've never played Final Fantasy. I think I never played. It. I think I stayed away from Final Fantasy because um, it wasn't a hack. It wasn't. It wasn't a um, hack and slash. That's why. That's why. But no, nah, it's not the game for me. Like I said. I've seen the game, it's very beautiful, but it's not the game for me. Now my game, back in the day, was Unreal Tournament. I used to do competitions on that. I mean competitions where you had to build your own rigs and go in and do competitions and stuff like that. I love Unreal Tournament. That was my shot, man. Oh, man. Three frags left. God luck. Oh man, I love that game. Yeah, we all missed the arcades, Mike. We all missed the arcades. You don't gotta say that twice. Oh man. Good, great. That that was the man, that was the hangout spot, man. At the arcade, man. And especially when you got like all the new games that came in, you know what I mean? I remember when Mortal Kombat came out to the arcade, Virtual Fighters 2. Um, oh man, man, so many different games that came out, man. And they had the cockpit games, man, with pole position. Oh man, that was, I mean, it was amazing. RK was freaking amazing. Like, you can't get that back. You can never get that back. I don't care if they bring out an RK, you can't get that experience back. And I remember uh, those people that had special privileges that had the Neo Geos, man. The people had Neo Geos. If you ever had a Neo Geo 
uh, system. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. It was amazing, man. It was amazing. Everybody had everything in common, man. You had your old school retros. You know, it was it was crazy. But I remember the Neo Geo. The Neo Geos came out. I saw one at Kitty City, and the price was nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. I thought it was a typo, but no, that system cost a thousand dollars for that system. And the reason why, if you look at the Neo Geo really quick, I know I'm talking about games in the middle of the demonstration, but you got to hear about this. The reason why the Neo Geo's console looked like the size of a large pizza box because that system had an actual arcade board motherboard inside the system. That's why the cartridges were so freaking huge. Because, you know, if you, had the, uh, if you had the Genesis or NES, they were like 16-bit systems. But a Neo Geo was like 360 bits. So keep in mind, like I say, if you have a mural, right, and you're trying to paint a picture onto this mural, a Neo Geo would not only give you the mural, but it would give you three others to paint on. So you can add stuff extra into the game. It would give you the exact duplicate of what you would have at the arcade. Where if you had a game that was 16 bits... Well, you would have a smaller image to put a larger image on, and that means they had to take certain things out or make alter the game. Like the shadows would have like a round; they wouldn't be shaped out. They had to cut things in the game to all of it to fit into that 16-bit. That's why when you got the Genesis or NES, it didn't look exactly like the Neo, um, the arcade version, because it was a watered-down version of the actual game. But the Neo Geo cartridges weren't cheap; they were the size of VCR tapes, and you could spend anywhere from 300 to 400 dollars a cartridge. You think I'm joking? I'm dead serious. Like, a lot of you not. Even when they were on sale, they were 150 bucks. So imagine that. When people complain about how expensive a cartridge is, if you lived through the Neo Geo era of having one of those things. Now, the plus side of the Neo Geo, if, you go to, if you're able to find a... Um, I mean, to cut you off. Uh, if you're able to find... Hey, Roy, how you doing? If you're able to find an arcade machine in a pizza shop, it's made by Neo Geo, take the time to look um, under the... Um, the coin slot of that Neo Geo, you would see a tiny little slot over top the coin where you dispense about that big, like a credit card size. That was for, for people who had the Neo Geo. They could go to the arcade and they could take their memory card out of their Neo Geo at home, go to the arcade, slide it into the arcade a machine, and they could basically start their game up where they started off at home at the arcade. Save at the arcade, pull the card out, and take it back home. That was the luxury of having the Neo Geo. So anytime you saw somebody at the arcade pull out that little car, you're like, oh my God, they have a Neo Geo. Yeah. That's a rig. Yep. I know my arcades, man. I've been gaming since Vector Graphics and Pong. It's a long time. Woohoo! I remember the first time my mom bought home Pong. She bought home. A lot of people don't realize that Radio Shack was called Tanny Corporations before they became Radio Shack. They were called Tanny Corporations. And they used to make these little handheld games like the baseball games, uh, football games, all kinds of electronic games. And one of the games they made was a little console system that had Pong on it. And you had my mother bought it home. First time we got our first arcade system. And she'd go to the back of the TV, hook it up to the UHF in the back. There's two little prongs that connect in the back. Put it on channel three or four. And man, me and my, my brothers would play all night playing Pong. And I thought that was the best thing ever. That gaming could never get any better than this. And here we are now. So, you know, anybody grew up in the NES era, the Genesis era, uh... There was no such thing as YouTube, Facebook, and all that. No, it was just straight gaming. That's all it was. There was none of that other stuff. Nope, just straight hardcore gaming. That's what it was. Ah, yes. Long time. I used to love Radio Shack. Yeah, everybody loved Radio Shack, man. Radio Shack was amazing. Yeah, Radio Shack was amazing, man. But, like I said, I hate seeing it go, but, you know, it's a shame. All right, people, I'm going to be out of here. I got much to do today. I got more orders I got to get out the door. I got a few PayPal orders that just popped up on my account, so I got to get that taken care of and get your orders out the door. Thank you for taking the time out. I always enjoy talking about just about everything. I mean, we sometimes, you know, I, I get off track, you know, but I do love talking about gaming and stuff like that, and it's, it's nice, you know what I mean, just to communicate and have fun with you guys. All right, be safe out there, and God bless.